time after the NFL draft, I always make a video talking about what team I feel that didn't make the playoffs the previous season will be a sleeper team this year and make the playoffs this upcoming NFL season. Now, 2018, my sleeper team was the Baltimore Ravens. Last season, in 2019, my sleeper team was the Buffalo Bills. And this season, my sleeper team that didn't make the playoffs last season, that will make the playoffs this season, are the Denver Broncos. Now, if you've been subscribed to the channel since the start of the offseason, you'll know that I've been very high on Drew Locke. Drew Locke, I plan on drafting him on my fantasy football squad this season. I think he is going to take a lot of people by storm. And with the weapons that the Denver Broncos have surrounded him with, especially in the NFL draft, first they got Jerry Judy with the 15th overall selection, which we knew the Denver Broncos were going to take a wide receiver. Now, me, I thought it was going to be Justin Jefferson because I didn't think Henry Ruggs, C. Lamb, or Jerry Judy were going to be on the board by the time we got to the 15th pick. But... Somehow, they had the choice of choosing between Jerry Judy and CeeDee Lamb, who I felt were the two best receivers in this draft class, and they took Jerry Judy. So now you pair Jerry Judy on the opposite side of Cortland Sutton, right? Cortland Sutton was a Pro Bowler last season. You got Jerry Judy, who was the best pure route runner in this draft class. He's probably one of the best route running NFL draft prospects I've seen in all my years watching football. To get Jerry Judy's route running... It's more than just hard work and dedication. As a receiver myself, it takes sometimes some receivers are just born natural route runners. Some people just are born with great footwork. And then they put in the extra work. But for Jerry Judy, his footwork and his route running just looks natural. Some some wide receivers train for years and years and years, and their route running and footwork still never gets to the level. That Jerry Judy's route running is. And you don't really see that out of your typical rookie wide receiver. Most rookie wide receivers like DK Metcalf and those guys have a little bit of work to do when it comes to being able to run the route tree early on in their career. But C. Lamb is a guy who can run almost every single route you draw up for him. And he's only a rookie. He also has good hands as well. He can make things happen after the catch. Then with their slot receiver... You got K.J. Hamler, right? Now, it remains to be seen because sometimes Jerry Judy is going to line up in the slot and K.J. Hamler might line up in the outside sometimes. So K.J. Hamler isn't strictly going to be the Denver Broncos slot receiver because see, Jerry Judy is also very good in the slot as well. But K.J. Hamler is going to have a big impact as well. And I also don't want people to forget about Deshaun Hamilton. I think Deshaun Hamilton is a little bit of a dark horse and the receiving core for the Denver Broncos that nobody's really talking about. I really like Deshaun Hamilton. Then you got tight end Noah Fenn, who led all rookie tight ends last year in receiving yards, I believe. He had 562 receiving yards, three touchdowns, and 40 receptions, and he was targeted 66 times last season. So, aside from Cortland Sutton, and when Emmanuel Sanders got traded, Noah Fenn was the second best receiving option in the Denver Broncos passing game and with the emergence of the new weapons they have like court like jerry judy and kj hamler that's going to give no offense some more looks because everybody's going to be focused on judy and Sutton, but nobody's really going to be keyed in on no offense they also got nick vanette for their second tight end you also got jake but who is basically a fragile piece of glass he gets injured every single time you touch him I don't even know if he's finished a full NFL season. But you also got to focus on the halfback group, which in my opinion may be the best backfield in the NFL right now. You got Melvin Gordon, who is an outside looking in top five halfback. He's in between that six to eight range. It depends on where you want to put him. So he's a top 10 halfback, outside looking in top five halfback, right? Now you also got Phillip Lindsay, who... Has had a very impressive couple of seasons in the NFL. So for the Denver Broncos, this offense has a lot of talent. This offense can put up points with the best of them. This offense should be able to have no problem scoring 20 points a game easily. This offense is good enough to keep up with the Kansas City Chiefs offense in the AFC West. And it may sound outlandish. It may sound crazy. But that's the reality of the situation. 
I'm really the matchup I want to see the most. Everybody's interested in seeing Tom Brady and Drew Brees battled out, but the matchup that I'm interested in seeing the most is Drew is Drew Locke versus Patrick Mahomes. That's the matchup I want to see the most because I want to see what Drew Locke does. Now, as the full-time starter for the Denver Broncos with the talented pieces that he has around him, going against Patrick Mahomes' offense and then to read. I want to see that dynamic, right? You always got to talk about the off the line. The off the line is going to be really improved compared to what it was in 2019. Now, they got, a letter, they got a lot of question marks on the offensive line. And I'm not saying they got a lot of question marks on the offensive line in a bad way. I'm saying that in a good way because you don't really know who's going to start at who. Because they got so much talent on the offensive line. Like at the offensive tackle position, okay, Garrett Bowles and Jawan James should be the two starters on the offensive tackle spots. Left tackle and right tackle. Then at the center position, it's basically going to be between rookie Lloyd Cushenberg, Barry from LSU, and... Graham Glasgow. Now, whoever loses that position battle most likely might be moved to off the guard. But then you're also going to have another competition there because then you're going to have the choose between Nathane Mutai and whoever the other guy is going to be. If it's going to be Graham Glasgow or Lloyd Cushenberry, whoever does end up winning that starting spot for that starting center position. Okay, so basically it's going to be those two guys versus Nathane Mutai. You also got Don Rosner, whose spot on the offensive line is pretty much cemented. Now, Nathane Mutai was a guy that the Broncos got like day three, who I thought was going to go day two. Maybe he could end up going late in the first round. You don't really find a lot of day one starting caliber offensive linemen and day three of the NFL draft. And Nathane Mutai just happened to fall in the Denver Broncos' lap. So I think he has the potential to end up starting day one for the Denver Broncos depending on how things works out for the Denver Broncos so this off the line is going to be really good and overall the offense is going to be really really talented I think the Denver Broncos should have no point no problem scoring 20 points a game this season now moving on to the defense side of the ball which is head coach and Vic Vangio's specialty Vic Vangio's Although the Denver Broncos weren't that good last year, at least the defense was good, which is really encouraging, right? Because most coaches have this thing that they're an offensive guru or a defensive-minded guy, but yet the defense sucks or the offense sucks. So if you're an offensive-minded coach, it doesn't matter how bad the team is, the worst part of your team or the best part of your team should be what you specialize in. And the Denver Broncos had a top 10 defense last year, in my opinion, under Vic Vangio, which is a sign of encouragement, in my opinion, about how high I am on Vic Vangio and how good the Broncos are going to be because I think they have a good coaching staff. On the defense side of the ball, you got defense in Shelby Harris, Draymond Jones. You also traded for Jerome Case, who you basically got for free in the trade with the Tennessee Titans. Although he's a little bit up there in age, he's still one of the best defense ends that we have in the NFL. Then you got Edge versus Von Miller, who is coming off of another Pro Bowl caliber season. And you got Bradley Chubb, who in his rookie season had like 12 sacks. We didn't really see him that much last year because he only played in like the first four games and then he ended up suffering a season-ending injury. So you got him coming back. Him and Von Miller are both going to be guys who are going to have double-digit sacks. Bradley Chubb is going to have double-digit sacks. Von Miller is going to have double-digit sacks. So when it comes to being able to get after the quarterback, they should have no problem being able to do that. And with the ability to get after the quarterback, that's also going to help out that secondary. Because they did lose Chris Harris Jr. and free agency. He signed the LA Chargers. Which I do believe is going to be a little bit of, well, I don't even think a little bit. I think that is going to have a big impact on the defense. Because Chris Harris Jr. is the epitome of a shutdown cornerback. I think he had like some crazy stretch. Like he went like two seasons without allowing a single touchdown. I don't know if that's true or if that's just over exaggerated but he literally went two seasons without allowing a single touchdown so to tell me that this Denver Broncos offense isn't going to be able to to tell me that the Denver Broncos cornerback position is going to be the same with his departure I think it's going to be a little bit of overstatement I think his loss is going to have a little bit of an impact on the defense but you do have guys who want to be able to step up such as A.J. Boye and Bryce Callahan A.J. Boye is a solid cornerback in the NFL right now, I don't, now, is he a true number one cornerback? And that remains up to debate. But I think if you pair him up with a solid cornerback on the opposite side of him, he can be really, he can be really good. 
Bryce Callahan. I think Bryce Callahan should be able to make that step up and end up becoming that very solid cornerback that the Denver Broncos need. So the cornerback position is pretty solid, although I do think the cornerback position does take a little bit of a hit with Chris Harris leaving. But in the back end of the secondary, you got Kareem Jackson, you got Justin Simmons bending the two safety spots. So this Denver Broncos team, in my opinion, is the biggest sleeper team going into the 2020 NFL season. And I believe the Denver Broncos, I'm not saying they're going to win the AFC West. But I am saying that I believe that they will make it into the playoffs in 2020. So let me know what you guys think about the Denver Broncos down in the comment section down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.